after a breakout first season, does Black Lightning still have the juice? Or did it fizzle out? Find out here on Comic Universe. What up guys and welcome to the Love Source Must See Comic and Nerd Culture Show. Welcome to the Comic Universe. I'm Dr. J. I've got a PhD in Nerd Culture and I should know. I'm pretty down myself. So, what's up guys? As you can see I'm rolling solo here on this video and I am here because Black Lightning Season 2 has just wrapped up as of recording this video as of tonight. And so I have plenty of thoughts to talk about. And I'm not going to go over every detail because I've done individual episode reviews on my main channel. I'm here to kind of just give you a broad strokes review of the season and uh, to take a page out of my boy C-Dub's book. I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the badass. So let's start off with the good. The good this season is a lot of the character development for more minor characters that we thought, you know, didn't get enough shine last season. Most importantly, the big star of season two is definitely China and McLean as Jennifer Pierce, Jefferson's youngest daughter. Now, we know at the end of season one, she comes into her powers. By the way, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen season one of Black Lightning or you're not entirely caught up on season two, because this is basically covering kind of broad strokes of everything without going into major details. So, as I was saying, Jen is probably the biggest star of season two. At the end of season one, we discover she comes into her powers, but she can't control anything. So, her parents are worried, and so they pull her out of school, they homeschool her, they give her this therapist that specializes in helping metas control their powers and she's slowly but surely learning to control her powers but as she's being coddled and cooped up to be protected she feels trapped and isolated and lonely and in swoops Khalil who by the end of season one became kind of a reluctant villain slash anti-hero who was forced into becoming a hitman for Tobias Whale after Tobias saved his life by giving him his legs back and giving him these new abilities as painkiller. However, Khalil didn't know that Tobias was the one that orchestrated him being paralyzed in the first place. Now, when he realizes that he's not about that life, he tries to get away from Tobias and because Jen and Khalil have rekindled their relationship and Jen is kind of tired of being oppressed by her parents and just locked away like some princess in a Disney movie, she decides to do what any Disney princess would do and run away. And this brings forth kind of the biggest and most interesting saga of the season. Jen and Khalil being on the run while Jen is trying to figure out her powers, and that's really, really dope. Leads to some great moments, some great character development for Jen, and some great development within the family, and how the family processes the loss of their youngest, you know, losing baby girl. And Lynn, she breaks down at first, and she's kind of losing it, but then she finds her way by finding purpose and trying to help the pod kids that we saw at the end of season one. And that becomes her main drive and focus throughout the season, which is really cool. Um, Jeff, he's really distraught. So he and Anissa are just shaking down everywhere, constantly looking, constantly searching. And it's just stressing him out, giving him more and more reasons to just hate Tobias and have that rivalry and mutual hatred kind of just build up. So interesting there. Also on Jefferson's front, he has to deal with the fact that he gets demoted from the position of principal after being quote unquote absent when the school was attacked by Khalil and Cyanide. So that means 
they hire a new principal and this guy he clearly doesn't understand the kids he's way harsher but Jeff he has to learn that in order to you know do his thing as Black Lightning he has to kind of sacrifice doing his thing as the principal and those those kids deserve somebody that can be there and as much as he hates to admit it, Lowry may not get the kids, but he will be there for them. So, he relents there. And also, Anissa's main subplot, besides her stealing from gangs and drug dealers to give money to the Reverend for the clinic and for other different causes, uh, she also is on the search for Grace because... Her girlfriend, Grace Choi, is acting strange. And if you know Grace, she is also a member of the Outsiders along with Anissa. And they were a couple in the comics as well. So when she goes AWOL, Anissa's whole mission is to just search for her to find out what was wrong, what's happening, because she's worried about her. She's in love with her. And uh, she does end up tracking her down and basically discovering that she's a meta but this version of grace is not an amazon with super strength and cool tattoos she's actually a shapeshifter which i think could be really interesting and pretty freaking awesome also the other element that is introduced here are the pod kids and the secret government metas the masters of disaster a group of metahuman soldiers created by the government um, to basically serve as weapons. And Tobias ends up getting his hands on them and trying to release them on the city. Now, the ASA manages to get them back and, you know, recoup their losses in that way and recover some of the pod kits. Now, something interesting is in the finale... One of those pod kids, if you look real close, right next to the pod that contains Wendy, the girl with wind-based powers that we met throughout season two that Lynn was helping out and kind of serving as a mentor for. Yes, her name is Wendy, and she has wind powers. Ha ha. Very punny. But, yeah, I digress. Uh, The guy next to Wendy has dreadlocks but not just any dreadlocks dreadlocks that look very familiar if you grew up in the early 2000s and had kids WB that's right folks superhero static shock we might be getting Virgil Hawkins in the CW universe Now, this is not the Arrowverse, mind you. Black Lightning is its own separate thing. Which makes me think that's probably why we're going to get Virgil here. And it makes a lot of sense, not just because of the fact that Virgil is an African-American superhero with electrokinesis. Because, you know, obviously that. But, uh, with the fact that um, Virgil's stories, you know, match up with a lot of the themes presented in black lightning his character is a natural fit for this cast and for this world now not gonna lie i hope they change up his powers a little bit because with jeff and jen having two different variations on electrokinesis having a third person could get a bit redundant so i hope if it is virgil in that pod that we do get to change things up So, that's the good. Let's talk about the bad. Honestly, the only thing that I can really say was bad about this season is the fact that there were 16 episodes instead of 10. And I know what you're thinking. Jay, what do you mean? Isn't more episodes a good thing? No, not really. Because, see, Black Lightning was a strong first season because it only had 10 episodes. So, it did not have time to waste. The plot was very concise, very tight, very focused, nothing dragged on, and, you know, you got to the point 
a lot faster than most other CW shows, which is the big problem with these 24 episode seasons is that there's a lot of padding and you know granted this was only a 16 episode season but that doesn't mean we didn't suffer from padding the jefferson battle with the principal saga lasted way longer than it should have um lynn going crazy over jen I feel like dragged on for just a tad too long. Not like super long, but I feel like they overplayed it just a little bit. And I feel like we used all that time with Anissa hitting the streets and, you know, Robin from the drug dealers given to the Reverend. But that didn't really go anywhere. You could have used some of that time to focus more on the Grace story, which I found more interesting. But that... Those are the only real negatives I can tell you about this season for real. I honestly enjoyed it. It wasn't as good as season one for me, but season one had a very high bar uh, to have, have season two beat. So I didn't really expect it to blow me away, although I really wanted it to. But with the setup for season three, with the Pierce family seemingly working with the ASA now and working against the Markovians who might be our big bads for that season. That looks to be very promising. We could get a nice outpouring of new characters, new metas, possibly even other outsiders characters like Halo and Geoforce if you're fans of Young Justice. I know you're familiar with them by now. And Maybe Grace's backstory also connects to this and a bunch of other things. And there's a little surprise that I'm not going to spoil about Khalil. Because, I mean, I know I've spoiled a lot of stuff already. But that was a big one that, you know, if you just so happen to be watching this and you haven't watched the finale yet. Which, I don't know why you're doing that, but just in case. I'm not going to spoil that part because that was like a huge jaw-dropper moment. And like I said possibility of static so i'm definitely excited for season three of black lightning honestly season two was solid just not quite as good as season one but uh let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments down below as always uh, did you enjoy black lightning season two um are you a fan of the directions they went how'd you like jen's costume i thought jen's costume was really dope um i loved her character arc in general um what do you guys uh, think is going to go down for Season 3? Do you guys want to see Static on Black Lightning? Let me know all those thoughts, theories, and feels in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to Hulk smash that like button and join the universe today. All our social media is in the description down below. Um, in the outro card, I will leave linked a video of YouTube's mysterious algorithm, things you might like. I'm going to leave linked my review of the Black Lightning season two finale that just dropped just in case you want to hear my full thoughts on that finale and you want to know what that spoiler is about Khalil. So uh, check that out. But until next time guys, this is Jay from Mr. Reviews for the comic universe and hopefully I'll see you guys next time in the universe. Zap zap.